Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about a question that a lot of people have been asking me recently, and that is, how do I overcome temptation? That's what's coming up today on Persistence in Prayer. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. For those of you guys who are new, make sure to press that subscribe button down below so you don't miss any of my uploads. And make sure to leave a like, you know, if you find this video helpful, you know, helps the channel, helps get the word out there. So make sure you do that. Today, we're going to talk about temptation and how to finally beat the thing that you have been struggling with. First thing that is most important to realize is that when you accepted Christ, when you became a born again Christian, you are filled with the Holy Spirit. So if you have your Bibles, as always, you can follow along. And we're going to be in Galatians 5, verse 22. And it says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So when you became a born-again believer and you accepted Christ you know, in, as your Lord and Savior, you received the Holy Spirit. And one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit is self-control. So the self-control, first off, that you thought you never had, you do have it, it's inside of you. But now we're gonna figure out how to activate that self-control, which is gonna keep you from temptation. First, one thing we need to all realize is that temptation is always gonna be there. But how you handle it is what's important. You know, Jesus, even though he lived a perfect, sinless life, you know, he still faced temptation. In Luke chapter 4, it talks about the temptation of Jesus. And starting at verse 1, it says that Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit, which you also have, returned from the Jordan River, and he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where he was tempted by the devil for 40 days. Jesus ate nothing at all that time and became very hungry. Then the devil said to him, if you are the son of God, change the stone into a loaf of bread. Imagine, he hasn't ate in 40 days. Imagine that, like we eat, you know, we go a couple hours without eating and all of a sudden we're hungry and he hasn't ate for 40 days and he gets tempted by the devil. But Jesus said, no, the scriptures say people do not live by bread alone. Notice Jesus' response to this temptation. He didn't argue. What he did was he quoted the scriptures against the temptation. Then the devil comes back and is like, okay, you know what? I'm going to test you again. I'm going to test you again. In verse 5, it says, Then the devil took him up and revealed to him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment. And he said to him, I will give you the glory of these kingdoms and authority over them, because they are mine to give to anyone, please. I will give it all to you if you worship me. Then Jesus replied, the scriptures say you must worship the Lord your God and own, serve him only. So remember, the devil's over here trying to show Jesus the entire world and saying, you can have this. All you got to do is worship me. But you want to know why Jesus could never fall into temptation? Because he knew truth. So then Jesus claps back, right, with like two truths to the devil. And the devil at this point is still fighting back. When the devil had finished tempting Jesus, he left him until the next opportunity came. So we really got to pay attention to that until the next opportunity came. So that means that even though he was able to pass all these tests and resist the temptation, the devil is always just going to be waiting for his next opportunity. Temptation is something that we all face, whether it's lust, whether it's drugs, whether it's alcohol, all that stuff. But the most important thing to realize is temptation usually starts way before the action takes place. So I ask you this question right now. What are you feeding yourself? Are you feeding yourself the things of God or are you feeding yourself the things of the world? For example, the music. When we listen to the music of this world as Christians, right? What is this music talking about? It's talking about sex, drugs, money. So when that stuff feeds into your subconscious, right? And you're having a problem with one of those things. Well, when you're sitting later on in the day, that those thoughts are going to start to creep up of the things that you listen to. That's why as Christians, it's very important to watch what we hear and what we see because those things can cause temptation. One helpful way that's gonna help you resist temptation is to first not even to be exposed to it. So it's important that we are careful what we are feeding yourself. See, if you're feeding yourself the things of the spirit and not the flesh, then it'll be easier to follow the spirit, the Holy Spirit in you that has self-control. But if you're living for the flesh, then you're more likely to fall into that temptation. So when you wake up, you have a decision to make. Is it gonna be God or is it gonna be self? 
And when you put God first and you seek him wholeheartedly, you're going to be less likely to be doing the things of the world. See me, I used to struggle with a lot of temptations. And I used to tell myself time and time again that, oh, next time, I'm, I'm not going to do it anymore. But what I realized is that we don't have any of the power. It's the power of the Holy Spirit in us that gives us the strength. So you need to ask God to let the Holy Spirit lead and to guide you in every single thing that you do. So if you're struggling with a temptation, remember that God is faithful, so he will always show you a way out. The first Corinthians 10, 13 says, the temptations in your life are no different from what others experience, and God is faithful. It then says, he will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. So remember, God will never give you more than you can handle. So whatever temptation you're going through, God will show you a way out. You don't have to feel like you're never gonna beat this. One thing you gotta ask yourself is who are your top five friends? Now, the people that you surround yourself tend to have a big influence on you. So you need to make sure that your starting five is filled with people who are gonna help lead you away from temptation. See, if you have friends, right, who are trying to make you party or drink or smoke, it's gonna be a lot easier to be tempted to wanna do those things. So you wanna sign yourself with believers, people who can help and pray for you and help you go through the things that you're going through because if you surround yourself you know around negative energy and around worldly people i'm not saying that you can't be friends with people who aren't saved that's not what i'm saying i'm just saying that the people who you most spend your time with are the people who are going to have the biggest influence on you something that really really will help you overcome temptation is prayer you know you have to stay in communion you have to talk to god you know when we don't pray it's almost like we're telling God that we're okay. We're telling God that we don't need to talk to him. Prayer literally breaks chains. If you feel that you've been praying, if you feel that you've tried everything, try fasting. When you fast, it helps you be more in communion with God. Every time I fast, that's usually when I feel the most intertwined with God. That's usually when I feel the strongest with him. You know, if you have a food condition where you have to eat, then try fasting from certain foods. But if you are perfectly healthy, you should be fasting to break these chains. And another thing that helps is true repentance, you know? If you're saying to God you're sorry, but you're not really trying to stop, you know, when I was struggling, it wasn't until I came to true repentance that I really saw that the temptation started to begin to move. You can be set free. The devil is a liar and he's always going to be constantly lying to you. Whatever you're struggling with, you don't have to be alone. God is right there waiting for you to take his hand every single day and to help you get out of this temptation. But the devil's gonna lie to you. He's gonna lie to you and he's gonna tell you that you're gonna struggle. That he's gonna tell you that you're never gonna find a way out. But there is freedom in Jesus Christ. You can be healed today. James 4, 7, it says, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. And that's a promise of God. But how much do we believe in the promises of God? How much do we actually believe that God can set us free? Jesus Christ is the chain breaker. He can heal you from whatever addiction you've been going through. It may have been 10 years. You may be fighting something. It may have been 15 years. It may have just been a couple months, but you can be healed. And if you've never even invited Jesus into your life, then I encourage you, invite him into your life. It doesn't hurt to try. Jesus is the answer to the problems in this world. Jesus is the answer to help you overcome temptation. You know, when you're going through the storm, ask Jesus, help me and he will he will always give you a way out and you know we're a family you know you don't have to do this alone you know you guys can always message me on instagram you can always leave something in the comment section below and i may not get to it immediately but i will do my best to get to it because we're all family at the end of the day you know i love each and every single person behind this camera and i want you guys to be free so father i just pray for every single person watching this video lord I pray, God, that, Lord, you would just touch them right where they are, Father. And I declare in the name of Jesus that the chains are broken. I declare that they are healed from whatever they're dealing with. Father, I just pray, God, that you would open their heart and open their mind. Father, I pray that you would just help them to resist the devil and submit to you. Father, I pray that every single person here would seek you and seek the things above and not of this earth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So remember, guys, God will give you every single thing that you need to overcome your temptation. Remember to fast. Remember to pray. 
Remember to be careful about what you watch and what you're intaking. And remember to seek God and to come to him and he will help you. And remember that when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you have the self-control. You don't have to be a slave to temptation. You don't have to be a slave to sin. You can walk free because of Jesus Christ. I love you guys. Have a great day. Fully known and loved by